Hey everyone, welcome back. Don't get scared by my bare face. We are going to take care of that in a second, but I wanted to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about beauty and more specifically, how to create a polished girl look. I know the clean girl aesthetic is all the rage right now, but to me, it is a little too no makeup makeup y, too natural. I like it to look that I have something on my face, not too much but just like i made a little effort i want my makeup to be a little bit more visible to look sophisticated classy to be flattering to my features and sort of hide what i don't want to be seen it's also a great opportunity to share with you a few new favorite products a few products that have been sent to me by pr and some old favorites that have been my ride and die tried and true that never let me down let's get to it I think first rule of beauty, and this applies to everyone, not just us polished girls. Are we making that a thing? I have a feeling that in English, it doesn't sound as good as it does in my mind. Let me know. But the most important thing is skin. If you have a beautiful blank canvas that you can work with, that you know what to expect of, putting on makeup is way easier, everything looks better. So here are a few of my favorite products that always help me, beginning with Shiseido moisturizers. I'm a sucker for Shiseido. I think they are one of the best skincare brands in the market. I have been using their Essential Energy moisturizer for the whole of winter. I'm basically all out. But this is such a great one if you want that barrier created on your skin. It has a lot of hyaluronic acid, so it will really just feel like your skin is protected and you wake up the next day with a very plump, extremely hydrated skin, which I love. Then for daytime, I'm also a sucker for skin SkinCeuticals and their redness neutralizer is a no-brainer to me. I do tend to get red during the day if I'm cold, if I'm hot, if I'm embarrassed, if I drink water, Wine. So having something that will neutralize that redness really helps and this is very effective. I have tried many products that claim to do it, but this actually does. One product that I have bought recently but have been really liking is the SVR Ampoule Relax. This is for your under eyes, which is an area that I'm a little self-conscious about. I feel like I have very tired under eyes. They're really hard to hide. This has a very funny consistency. You will see that it kind of looks like a serum-y gel, but once you start blending it in, it turns into this oil that is not heavy, it's very light oil, but it really nourishes that under eye and gives you a very relaxed look. Then of course, SPF is a must. Let me tell you a little story. I went to lunch with a few friends from work and we were talking about beauty products, favorites, etc. And I said that I apply SPF every single day, even if I'm not going to the beach or the pool or if I'm sunbathing. They were completely shocked. And if you are shocked by this information, it means that you are not applying SPF every day so you should warning here I will put a little picture to convince you okay go out get yourself some SPF we are lucky because we live in a world where technology in cosmetics have provided us with great SPF alternatives you can get moisturizers with SPF, you can get SPF sprays, or you can get tinted SPFs, which is what I have been wearing lately. This is from Istin. It is a SPF 50, so it will really protect you. It's their fusion watercolor in medium. You will apply it and we'll see that it's very runny. It kind of looks like nothing once you blend it, but it will sort of tint your skin with a bronzy shade that really uniforms and gives you a good base to apply concealer. Something else that I do religiously every day is take off my makeup with a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil. I have talked about the Clarins oil makeup remover. This thing to me works very well. I know that a few of you have written to me saying that it doesn't work for you. I love it. But yesterday I was at Sephora and I saw this one from the Inky list. It is their old cleansing balm. And I really like the packaging because usually cleansing balms come in a tub and they take so much space. This is in a squeezy tube and you just squeeze it out and the texture is the same as a balm. You just rub it in, 
Take all of your makeup off, then you rinse it out with water and you have yourself a beautiful cleansed skin that is ready to take in any other product that you apply on top. Moving on to hair. Now, I have talked about this before. I have very fine hair, it falls, I don't have much of it, and I have spent years trying to change that. My dream was to have a voluminous, super bouncy hair. I tried curling it, I tried teasing it, I tried rollers, I've tried pin curls, which took a lot of time, and it doesn't work. I mean, it's too much effort to get very little results. So I have just learned that instead of fighting it, I'm just going to work with what I have. What I do is, I wash my hair with very simple, very gentle shampoo and conditioner. I will not do any treatments. I usually don't do masks. I don't color my hair. Then after I get out of the shower, I'll usually apply some sort of styling lotion. I really like this one by Vela Emi. This is their perfect setting lotion. It will just help keep any type of styling that you do to your hair. Then while my hair is still wet, I will dry at least the base of it. You will see that I have a lot of baby hair that will not cooperate. They will during the day just spark up like a crown if I don't try and tame them. And what I have been loving for that is Zuvi's hair dryer. I did have another hair dryer and let me show you, wait. This thing set my hair on fire. Just compare them. It's like a time machine. How are these the same category? I cannot tell you. What I really enjoy about Zuvi is that the temperature is very controlled. So this baby uses something that is called light care technology. Basically what it does is once you turn it on, it turns this green light on and it mimics what air drying would be. So you know when people tell you that you should air dry your hair, that blow drying is really bad because it messes up with the follicles. Well, this actually doesn't do that. So you are drying your hair, you're speeding up the process without the negative impact of heat. Results in a lighter hair that is healthier, that retained its moisture and it's not just uh, parched. The design is also really cool. It's very lightweight. It has many attachments. So this is what you use for the light care, but you can also add the little nozzle if you want to blow dry and get a little bit more styling. Everything's magnetic, so very easy to switch up. Also has the diffuser if you have curly hair. Super cool. I'm really, really happy with this. And once my hair is completely dry, I will simply bend it with a curling iron. And when I say bend it, it's literally bend just the ends to get that sort of swoosh that I really like. I think that for my hair, since it doesn't really hold big styling, this just stays on for days. It is also a great little trick to look like you spent some time, but not too much. If we're talking about a polished look, I think something that looks good put up or down is a must. And this is what happens when you do your hair like this. With my bangs, I will go a little bit over just to give it some movement. And one thing that I do to keep it, when I go to sleep, I just pin back my bangs and I go to bed like this. This way, when I wake up, I have a little bit of volume, a little bit of lift on the bangs and it's not dented because my hair dents very easily. Moving on to the fun part, makeup. I think that makeup can make or break a look and it's very important to know when to stop. I know that it is extremely tempting, especially when we watch videos and we see new products, to just slap a bunch of stuff on our faces. But if we want to look polished, I think that we need to find the perfect balance between made up and natural. For this section of the video, I did get a bunch of new things and I'm really excited to show you. So let's start. So let me scoot you over up close and personal. Let's start with the eyes. I just got this Armani eye tint. This is what it looks like. This is color 22M. It's this beautiful kind of chocolatey brown, not even chocolatey, kind of cappuccino brown. And what it basically is, is a little tint that you'll apply and then you blend out and it's a one and done. So exactly what we want. I'll literally just apply it 
and blend it out and it just adds a little bit of dimension. Something else you can do is take a little synthetic brush. This is from Kiko. I love this brush. It's their number two brush. It is basically the shape of the tip of your finger and I'll use it to just cut out a little bit of my crease, not too much. I'm really liking this actually because even though it is a creamy moussey formula, it sort of dries matte and this shade of brown is very neutral so you can pair it with anything else that you want or you can wear it by itself i think the goal here when you want to look polished is for people to look at you and not pinpoint like not know exactly what is making the difference and sort of find that the overall look is balanced and harmonious. I like some definition, so I will be using Nabla's Cupid's Arrow. It's sort of a chubby pencil that you apply and blend out. It is very forgiving, very easy. Just apply it and blend it out with the same brush that you have used before. So, And you'll see that these sort of earthy tones, the neutrals, just like in clothing, are synonymous with elegance on makeup. So if you're in doubt, go with browns, with nudes, with tans. That always helps. And sometimes I will find that this is a bit too dark, especially for daytime. What I have been loving doing, and this is not exactly made for this, but I have been applying Charlotte Tilbury's Hollywood Flawless Filter on my eyelids. So it will give that glow that is usually reserved for the face to your eyes. Add a little point of gleam that illuminates the eye a little bit. So once you turn your eyelid, once you have your eyes open, you will just see a bit of pearliness without any glittery finish. And if you want to take it even a step further, using this as a base for maybe a shinier eyeshadow, for instance, this is also from Charlotte Tilbury, it's the Exaggerize palette. It has these beautiful shades and if I want to apply, for instance, this one, which is sort of a pearly champagne white, just get a little brush and whoop, pinpoint it right there. So the powder is setting that liquid and it is also adding a bit of luminosity there. See? A new product that has also been sent to me and I have been loving is the Sweet Lash Mascara. I have seen this on one of my favorite makeup artists on YouTube. She's called Andrea Ali and her recommendations are always amazing. I'm not big on mascara because I have very thin and very few eyelashes just like my hair and mascara kind of weighs it down so my eyelashes kind of just drop so i always avoid using it but with this formula and this brush it's almost like a comb so very minimal very pared down but you can still get some definition on your lashes which is exactly what i love i will always curl my lashes this is a tweezerman eyelash curler and with this brush you can just comb through your lashes and really focus the application on the base, which is usually what helps keeping your lashes upwards. Can you see the difference? I mean... Moving on to skin. Skin, to me, is the most important part of makeup. It can make you look polished, it can give you that beautiful effect of a blurred out complexion or something lit from within, very healthy, or it can be cakey and heavy and sort of make you look older than you are, which is not what we want. So I have a few tricks up my sleeve. I have always loved mixing illuminating primers. This one from NYX is the one that I have worn the most in my makeup journey. And I just take a foundation and I mix them together. This has been discontinued, but I was going through the hallways of Sephora and I came across this Dior Glow Veil that is very similar in consistency. It is not as illuminating, but I think that what I love about this is the texture. So it will act almost as 
a dilution to foundation and make it a little bit more skin-like. And I think this will do the same thing. So let's test it. Hopefully it will be the same. I am just using my Dior Forever foundation that I really like. I do one pump of each. And can you see the difference in texture? Whereas the foundation is very creamy, the primer is runny. So when you mix them together, you kind of get a new more serum-like consistency that looks more natural and just more spreadable as well. I can already see that I'm gonna like this. Especially for day to day, I think foundations can be very heavy. Unless you need a lot of coverage, then I understand it and there are probably better techniques for that than this one. But it's the fact that you can also build it as much as you like until you get a uniform and seamless color without adding too much product, which can be so tempting. And I really love the glow that it gives. So I'm just adding a little bit more on the areas where I get red. For a lot of people, this would be too little, but I think that starting with foundation lightly and then correcting things with a concealer is way better than just piling on product. Then concealer. I do a combo because I like to correct a little bit of my dark circles, but I also like to illuminate under my eyes. I do a little, little bit of the Shiseido Future Solution. This is actually a foundation and it is very liquidy and very glowy, which I think is good for concealer. I saw Nem Vo applying it once on Instagram and became obsessed. It comes with a little spatula, which is very handy. I just dip it into the product and apply it directly to my face. I won't double dip, you're not supposed to do that. And I just put on a little bit here and in the fold. Then with the same Kiko brush that I showed you earlier, this is a new one, of course, I will just tap it just to cancel out that sort of purpley, greenish under eye that I have. That drives me crazy. And it already does a really great job, I think. Once that's applied, I will get to a more illuminating concealer. This is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Concealer. It has the little brush tip and I'll just apply right below where I had applied the other one and to the corners of my eyes that get very red doesn't matter what I do. And I'll also use this to do minor highlighting. So if I want to sort of do here or my chin, I'll use this one and blend it out. Another product that I'm really excited to try, this is new, is the Tarte Sculpt Tape. It's supposed to be a dupe for Charlotte Tilbury's wand. So this is a cream contour, which I think is so much easier than a powder or a bronzer. This is intense. Oh my God. Wait, let's blend it. Oh, it blends immediately. <gasps> this is genius. And you get yourself a little bit of color, a little bit of definition, but it is transparent, which I love because what I hate are those sort of cream bronzers that almost look like paint and you try to blend it out and it won't go away. Let's try it on the other side. This looks like it's not gonna work and then you blend it. How silly am I to get this excited over a liquid bronzer? I'll just do a little bit here and a little bit here to sort of, again, give dimension to my face and a little bit of coloring so that I don't look so pale. I really like cream blushes as well to get that polished look because it will blend seamlessly with any creams that you have applied. But I did get a powder blush that I want to test out. So I'm just going to set with a little bit of powder. This is Kiko's Radiant Fusion Powder. This is old, you can see it's one of my favorite powders because it has this sort of baked consistency. It has a lot of coverage. What I do so that it's not too powdery on my face, 
I'll take a beauty blender, I will boop it in, then I will take the excess off on my arm and I will just apply it where I know that I want to either take out shine or where I want to apply any type of powder. So for instance, we're doing cheek, so I'll just apply it here and then I'll just apply a little bit here and a little bit on my chin. If I need more, I'll do it at the end, but this is just to help blending the blush. The blush I got is also from Kiko, is their Unlimited Blush in color 6. This is a beautiful sort of very natural burned pink. I really like Kiko's powders. I think Kiko is so underrated as a brand. Here in Italy, we do see it a lot, but in the rest of the world, I know that they are available, but they just don't get the attention. And I try to tap my blush because I don't like it when there's a streak. So maybe by doing this in my mind, I am distributing the product in a more diffused way. Again, if you want to add that point of light, you can use the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I don't have the full size of this because I honestly don't think it's necessary. A little bit goes a long way. Some people wear this as a primer I think it is too thick. I tried it once and it was scary. I just use it to give it that highlight. Let me do it on my inner corners as well. Let me just throw on some gel on my eyebrows. This is from e.l.f. I think it cost me like three bucks and it does the job. Sometimes I will add with the NYX Lift and Snatch little eyebrow pen, just a little bit on the front. Just fill them in slightly, just to give the illusion of a few more hairs. And finally, for the part that everybody asks me is my lip combo. As I was saying, Kiko is underrated. If you need to get yourself a lip liner and you feel like you have sort of the same shade as mine, which is kind of rosy but sort of light. This is their Everlasting Color Precision Lip Liner in color 420. It is the perfect nudie, brown, rosy, taupey, whatever you want to call it, that has the color of lips. So you are applying something that, again, makes sense on skin. It's not alien to the chromatic story of your face, it's complementary. What I do is I will line the outside and fill in the corner. I don't like particularly on me to line all of my lip, like all the way. I think it looks a little too much, but just the corners act as a frame. I'm doing the same thing on the bottom lip. So you'll see that I align this part and the middle is completely unlined. And then you apply your lip color. I have a bunch of Kiko lipsticks that are all very much loved by you guys, so I'll share them with you. First, let me share with you the one that is not Kiko. This one is from Dior. It is the Dior Addict nude look, color 100. It is beautiful, nudie, kind of see-through. So if you're looking for a lip balm for every day that you want to kind of make look like your lips, but better, this I think is really pretty. This one is the Kiko Gossamer Emotion Creamy Lipstick in 104 great color. Similar to the Dior, a little more apricot-y. I like this because it is not a total matte, so very comfortable to wear, lasts a long time as well. If you want full-on lasting power, Kiko's Unlimited Stilo in color 3. This baby doesn't move. Sometimes I actually need a cleansing balm to take it off. It is more nudie. You can see it's more beige. But the one that I'm applying today is Kiko's, again, Gossamer Emotion Creamy Lipstick, but in color 107. Can you see it's a little bit more pink than the 104? So it's in a different color family, a little bit more feminine. 
and a little bit more visible as well. Isn't this gorgeous? And you almost don't see the lip liner, but the fact that you lined just the corners sort of gives you that angle that I really like. Get this hair down. And this is it, everyone. This is what I think a polished girl look looks like. It is not no makeup. It's not overly natural, but it just sort of showcases your best features, gives you confidence, makes you look presentable. Whatever you wear with this will look a thousand times better and a thousand times more elegant. I think it's important to do what works for you and to just create a look that you can repeat time and time again so that you don't go crazy trying to get ready in the morning. This is something I'm trying to be really good at. I don't want beauty, makeup, hair to become my life. I don't want it to be vanity. I just want it to be self-care. There's a fine line. This makes me feel confident. It makes me feel like I put in an effort, makes me feel ready to face the day in any occasion, any setting. Hope you have a great week and we'll see each other again next time. Bye-bye.